folks, it's Steve back here again to finish up our walkthrough of digitizing music with SmartScore 64 Pro NE. We've been working on a piece of sheet music from the time of the Civil War called Arena, composed of a vocal line and piano lines. So this is part three, and let's pick up where we left off from part two. Okay. Well, I've gone ahead and essentially now fixed the vast majority of the remainder of the score. Um, I see something here that I didn't get right. I, I missed that. Oops. I see here that I didn't get something I needed to get. So I need to basically get rid of this note. So if we click, remember if we said if we click X, I'll, I'll select them both with just the X button. But so to make the chord, to pick members of the chord, I have to go ahead and click Z. And you can see now that we've got the chord selected. Go ahead, get rid of that. And grab a sharp. Make it good. S pressing the shift button to nudge bring it over, and there we go. Well, while we're here, um, we can see that we need to talk about now pickup measures and partial measures. How SmartScore handles partial measures is it requires that we change the time signature to match the meter of the pickup measure. Now this works out okay because that is exactly the same thing that Dorico does. Dorico requires in all pickup measures and in partial measures that we define the meter that creates a time signature where that measure then um, is complete. So in this particular case, we can see the pickup measure is a quarter note. So to fix this, to make this a complete measure, we would have to change the time signature to 1-4. Now you can hide the time signature, or, or you can hide any symbol by going up here to the eyeball, clicking Hide Show Symbol, go to the Symbol Selection, click on Time Signatures, click on Numerator Over Denominator, make this 1 over 4, bring it down, and change it. And you will see that it highlights it to gray. Now we have to now change everything after that, of course, because now it thinks all the other measures are 1 over 4. So let's go ahead and take off the hide show, and you'll see that it goes away, because we don't want to hide the 4, 4. Click here. And now we have 4-4 four, four shown throughout. And if I take this off, you can see that I fixed all of the other partial measures, 7 8 1 8 in the same way. And here at the end of the piece, 7 8 OK? So basically now our score has been set in such a way that it, it'll take off the hide. Um, escape to get out of the um, time signature panel. And essentially now we're ready to talk about what I would call finishing touches. And so let's talk for a second about dynamics because we have no dynamics in this piece. So let's go ahead and just for the sake of doing it, let's add some dynamics. So let's start this piece, the beginning of the melody, at a piano, so we click on dynamics in the symbol section, piano. Go ahead and place a piano, and place a piano. Why? Because in fact, in SmartScore, the right-hand piano and the left-hand piano are separate instruments and separate lines, and a dynamic has to be placed for four, for both right hand and left hand. And this is different than in other notation softwares, whereas if you put a dynamic in the middle, it would cover both. That's not true in SmartScore. 
So let's say now we want to go ahead and have a crescendo. We can go up here to the dynamics, symbol selector, and there's shortcut keys for this, by the way. Click crescendo. Drag those notes that we want to have the crescendo applied to. Release. And we see the crescendo mark. Go down here to the bottom, <clears throat> to the bass line. Put a crescendo mark. Let's crescendo it, let's say, to mezzo forte. So go here, let's put a mezzo forte in place. And let's put a mezzo forte in place. You'll notice that when you place the mezzo forte in place, the note is not highlighted. If you actually highlighted the note or tried to, you, you couldn't do it. The question becomes one of how then this is exported in an XML file. And the answer is for those of us that would prefer these markings to be below, SmartScore does not have a way that I can determine to do that. If you want to lengthen this crescendo, you would exit out of your this, exit out of your Bring your mouse back to the properties escape put your mouse over the law over the the um, line you want to do and you can see here that you can change the duration of the crescendo so at this point we also need to talk about assigning instruments to assign instruments you go ahead and hit on a Mac, Command M, which is the system manager. And you will notice that it's actually talking about three parts, currently assigned an oboe, a right piano, and a left piano. Smart score does not group the grand staff, so it's one instrument selection. We have to select right, and we have to select left. Now, this is important. Let's say we want to change the oboe. And let's say we want to change the part from an oboe to, let's say, a B-flat clarinet. We click on oboe. We go to the drop-down menu. And let's say we're going to change it to a clarinet, B-flat clarinet. OK, apply gone. Now, clarinet B-flat is applied to this part, but notice there has been no transposition of the key signature. That is because SmartScore always and only shows the score in the transposed position. So what we've done actually is we've created a situation where the B-flat clarinet part is not going to be correct because it did not do what many other notation software systems do when you change a part, which is to automatically transpose the part. It does not. And when you export this, as an XML and open it in Dorico, Dorico will think that this is a transposed part. And it will not be correct. Well, what can you do to fix that in SmartScore? Well, in SmartScore, what you can do is you can simply transpose this part to the correct key signature. How do you do that? You go here to the button, transpose button, Click on it. Over here, there's a Limits tab. Click on the Limits tab, the entire score, but apply it only to the B-flat clarinet. Because remember, we renamed it as B-flat clarinet. Once we've done that, we have a, the part. Let's go back to the type. Now we want to transpose the part. And we know that as a B-flat instrument, it's going to be essentially one step above. So if we're in the key of A, 
for the piano, we need to be in the key of B. By moving this guy up and down, we can find the correct key. Oh, come on. B major. There we go. Just had to find it. Now, we could have done it by moving the notes, right, and transposing, right? We could have done it another way. But I chose to do it by just going by the key. So let's go ahead, adjust stems, transpose, um, and here, move notes closest. We see now that the B-flat clarinet part has, in fact, been transposed up a step from A to B. And if we now export this, it should export correctly. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and click the Output tab. Let's export it to XML. Call it Lorena to Downloads. And let's go ahead and I will open the exported file in Dorico. We see that having done the work that we needed to do in SmartScore, we see, in fact, it is correct. Because we have concert pitch, the clarinet... Um, is not transposed, we click the transposed pitch, and there we have it. So it is correct, and it's been in the transposed position, it is correct. Now the other thing I want to note want you to note is when you use an XML an XML export from SmartScore. In fact, the dynamics may not be attached correctly. So, how do we know this? If we click on the P, we can see, in fact, that it is wrong. It, remember, we put it way over here. So we would have to physically move it over here. Not sure where two P's came from. Welcome to exporting. And here we have our symbols, but I want you to notice there are no legs attaching this to the notes. And as you know in Dorico, that's how you make a decision, because now we cannot do, we cannot manipulate this. So let's say we delete it, and we delete it. And we go ahead and put in, no, I should have done it the other way. Okay. Let me go ahead and select some notes and go ahead and put in a, um, a crescendo. Whoops. I hit the wrong button on my Mac. So you can see that in Dorico, as you know, your crescendos are actually tied to the notes. The export from the XML file did not do that. I'm going to go ahead and close Dorico. Don't save. This is why I rarely, if ever, use hairpins or add uh, dynamic markings inside of SmartScore. Now they will work inside of SmartScore using its engine, but if to export to, to uh, Dorico, I have found that it is simply easier to add all of the crescendos and decrescendos in after I've exported. Okay, I think I've made all the points that I need to make. I hope this has been helpful to some people. Thanks very much, folks.